Hey guys, Soldier First Class here. Just wanted to let you know that this Let's Play series is basically just a upload of my stream series. Um, we'll be this is going to be a much longer episode than our normal episodes will probably be. Uh, mostly just because of the fact I wanted to get the entire Nibelheim flashback into this video, and it was really hard to find a spot to actually like cut and do everything and make sure that everything was right. So this episode is definitely longer than normal episodes will be. I also want to give a special shout out to Square Enix for sponsoring this Let's Play series and my stream um, with a review copy of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Shout out to them. It was a pleasure working with them again, uh, especially after I worked with them on Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy XVI. And, you know, uh, we did a stream series of sixteen as well here on the channel. So I just wanted to give a special shout out to them and a special shout out to you for watching this series. I really appreciate it. I love you all very much. And I hope you enjoy. Later, guys. And we're at the opening screen for the first time in a long time. So let's start this new game up. I've already got all the bonuses. Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure I still have all the bonuses. Plus, I ended up getting um, the Shinra... Whatever they call it. The bangle that you got for uh, donating to Extra Life. I've also got that, so... Alright. I don't really want the speaker on. Okay, active. Alright. Alright, so just a little quick recap. Don't worry, guys, I'm not gonna have a non flashback or anything. I'm waiting, Cloud. I'm here on the Midgar Expressway. The scene is indescribable. How Countless is the. Oh, shit. And part of the Hold on. Has collapsed. Okay, there we go. I forgot the music was still the on. Smoke rising from the rubble is reminiscent of a funeral pyre. Of course, this is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of the... I the fall of the Sector 7 plate, culminating in this unprecedented destruction caused by a massive tornado which... This is badass, zero, actually. One, and two. After a briefing with Shinra investigators, Mayor Domino released a statement declaring the tornado to be, quote, weather warfare perpetrated by the infamous insurgent group known as Avalanche. Okay, that's kind of cool that they did it that way. also suspects the involvement of Wutai and has begun investigations into the matter. Oh, God. There's the terrier, or, yeah, the terrier. <clears throat> so I already know where we're at. This is kind of a cool intro, though. I gotta admit. All right, new house. Appreciate you, buddy. I knew it. I knew it. Just so we're clear, I called this four years ago when everybody told me I was wrong. <clears throat> it's a it's a moral victory, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it. Of course, this is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of the. 
Let's get this over with. Why? That tornado really did a number on the city. Took you long enough. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that follow. Caused by the tornado. Man, when it rains, it pours. As you can see. Over there. Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are already in progress. We still have one right. Uh, not sure, Icarus. Not sure. Armed with a buster, sir. Highly dangerous. I repeat, the fugitive is an ex-soldier, armed with a buster sword. Huh? Back over here! Get him on board! Prep for takeoff! The rescue team has pulled people from the rubble. Okay, if they're looking for a fugitive with a buster sword... Get the camera! <clears throat> but Zack and Cloud just showed up. Come on. This way. Contact the SAR team! And these are... Targets have been secured! We're expelling via Hilo now. Hmm. Move it. We're taking off. What? Hey, turn that off. The survivors are being taken away. I got here. I just need to survive. You don't know when Okay, there's Kyrie. Excuse me. Could you look after my friend? Just for a bit. Too much Mako. But he'll be fine. <laughs> hey! Zach's, uh... Zach's voice sounds a little bit better this time. Yes, Zach's Goofy Run is still there. Oh. Okay. Alright, well that was quick. That's motor. Okay, so there. I, I, I want to. <clears throat> I want to preface this by saying that I will. There are going to be times during this stream where I am going to talk out loud what I'm thinking. Um. Took you long enough. Add thank you for that follow. I'll be talking out loud what I'm thinking. And then I might like say something like a question. I'll let you guys know when I'm actually asking a legit question. But there are like I said, there's gonna be times where I'm thinking in my head as we play. And uh I'll say it out loud a little bit just to let people know. Um what I'm thinking about, but please don't release or reveal any information that I don't explicitly ask for, because this is how I, I even do this when I play games by myself, like I would rather think about it out loud so I can hear it being said, so just so we're clear, I just don't want anybody to come in and be like, oh no, but that's actually, and I'm like, eh, no. hey, what's up, Omega? Ah, uh, Ajay, thank you uh, for uh, following. I wasn't, but uh, I ended up deciding to. All right, so Motor is here. So Zack and them would have never fought Motor. But we're in the Terrier timeline. I, I'm, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep playing. Buster's 
Appreciate it, guys, for sure. Oh, hello. Oh, okay. His aerial com Oh, shit! He doesn't have to dodge or anything to launch into aerial. Okay. Zack's like, didn't I just survive this shit? Can you please leave me alone? What the hell? Heads up! I love how he just nonchalantly... Come on, let's get Poor doggo. Where's the ancient? Heads are gonna roll if we don't find them. Just shut the hell up and search. I love how every time it rains, shit just goes down in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, now that they've had time to really tune his voice, uh, Zack doesn't sound bad. Oh. Well, that's early. No joke. All right, then. Seeing as we've got the time, want to tell the rest of us about you and your buddy Sephiroth? Sure. If Tifa doesn't mind. Me? Yeah, no problem. It's... It all started five years ago. I was 16 at the time. There was hardly any work for soldiers back then. And what little there was, it was boring as hell. My heart wasn't in it. Then, out of nowhere, the job of a lifetime came. A mission they did a really good job of this segment. I couldn't believe my luck. I played this in the demo and it was really, really good. <clears throat> yes, I did get the awards. Yeah, I'm gonna play, replay the demo segment really just because, um, Let's get like, this, over with. this is a fresh playthrough. Hey, man. Feeling any better? Hey, you Goten, enough. thank you for that follow. Sure don't look it. I wish I could help, but never been motion sick. Sorry, man. Ready to do this? Yeah, you bet. <sighs> There's something that I want to point out but I'm not going to rain it in because if I do Sorry. and someone in here Kids. is uh say, new I to this like franchise I don't want to say it cuz if it's another one of those Turks gigs you can let me off right here but it's about one of the uh grunts we just saw finally make first what do they do call a ceasefire with Utah stealing my shot at glory Yep, Square Enix actually did give me this copy. I joined up so I could be a hero, like you. 
So shout out to Square Enix for sponsoring the stream tonight. Another one of those Turks gigs. Fine. Job's a job, I guess. Where is it? Nibelheim. Nibelheim? That's where I grew up. It's the one with motion sickness. I just turned it up a little bit. I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't like overpower me either. So really bad. Oh, goddamn it. Trying to figure out the parry. Oh well, I'll just kill this thing. Yeah, hopefully, Bilbo. Sorry to hear you're not feeling the greatest. He was in a different league from the rest of us. Oh, hey, JN. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed the beginning uh, from a gameplay perspective. Verdict still out on the uh, story that aspect of it. Built the first reactor, right? Yeah, it all started in the fall. Something was wrong with the reactor, and the whole village was up in arms. Talk of strange new monsters on the mountain only made things worse. People were scared, desperate. The villagers tried to take care of the monsters themselves, but it was no good. They ended up calling Shinra. So the company sent help. Best they had. I have noticed certain uh, parts are having some texture pop-ins. I'm playing on performance mode, though, so I kind of assumed that would be the case, but uh, I've heard the optimization on this isn't the greatest Home at times. Home, right? Tell me. How does it feel? I have no home, so I wouldn't know. Uh, you still got parents though, right? A mother named Genova. She died shortly after I was born. My father. Oh, there. Genova. Yeah, the music is incredible. Like building. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Come on, let's go. Hope I didn't keep you waiting. I'm Xander, the mayor here. I wanted to greet you myself, to uh, welcome you to our humble little town. Please, if you'll follow me. I think it's funny off duty till sundown. that when they were designing NPCs and stuff like that, you can tell that there's ones that they really focused on, and then there were others where they were like, let's just make uh, generic villager number 52. Because, like, the, the NPCs really stand out. Maybe a 
girlfriend? Backwater is an understatement. Don't blame you for getting the hell out of here. You know, uh... Look at all this mud. It's never gonna come off. If you need help, just say the word. Interesting. Okay, so I pretty much know where everything's at. Excuse me, because of the demo. Which actually, I'm pretty sure I read that the uh, anything you get in the demo um, does not come back with you in the main game. So I might just not Let's worry about finding everything in this section. Hey, Something Final Trails, thank you for that follow. Okay, that's that's Tifa's house. Let's get this over with. Then I stop on my mom's. Not that it matters. Sure it does. Hey, hey Omega, enough. thank you for that follow. Me too. Yeah. Go on. I love they added the Bioware style uh uh conversation options. I don't remember if Remake had those or not. So after I left for Midgar, she was on her own. Oh, Claudia. It was the first time we'd seen each other in two years. First time. Then last. Hmm? I'll be right there. <sighs> yeah, Cloud's mom's hot. I'm just saying. Hey. Welcome home. Come in. Let me get a good look at you. Better yet, oh let me get a good look at you, Claudia. So that's what they've got you wearing, huh? You soldiers sure do clean up nice. I've never been so proud. The man you've become. Women must be hounding you day and night. Not really. You know, there's all kinds of temptations in the big city. I'd feel a lot better if I knew you'd found a good girl. One who'd make sure you didn't get into trouble. I can take care of myself. An older, more mature girl. I could keep you on the straight and narrow. And tell you when you're being a silly goose. <laughs> That's the perfect type for you, I'd say. I'll say this, when they when you get a good like feeding you properly, aren't they? Look at the characters. Oh, but you know Claude, they're the level of detail really in their skin proud? and stuff is really crazy. You're my son. Of course, I'll always be. Okay, that's enough. The Midgar Zalem in the original is a bastard, but it was the only way you pretty much got the uh uh, I think it was beta. Was the, I think that was the only way to get beta, wasn't it? So how did it feel being back up there? I don't know. Nostalgic, I guess. After two years away and all that. Uh huh. Yeah, I love the Costa del Sol music. Like, you can see the imperfections in their skin. It is insane. Yeah, if they eventually do get to that stuff, I that's gonna be insane. Bet most of them had to do with you. Remember my cat? I feel like Knights of the Round would almost be I think. Yeah. Almost be too overpowered for something like this. And that day was no different. Old Fluffy. 
I, I, sometimes I'm like, so I want to say, I, this is probably going to get me roasted, but I'm not a huge fan of the compilation in general, but there are times where like they do some really neat stuff you with it into my room and fluffy is one of those where it's like this random thing, but I actually kind of like that they added that con. Excuse me, that they added that context. You went through my stuff? I know I shouldn't have. Cloud! You asshole! <laughs> I, I love that part. Oh. Uh, no, no sheet music. Okay. So they changed that. Alright. Alright. Let me see if I can do Did you this by memory. Play? I don't know why, but I heard that. I read that in your accent. All right, for my next trick. Oh, wait. All right. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Just left it alone, you know. I won't always be around to do that for you. Thinking. So, yeah, uh, don't quit your day job. Listen, Barrett, it's not nice. I know, I know. Put me in the uh, piano playing Hall of Fame. I'm a prodigy, as it were. you cloud how oh, you've grown i wonder why i must say you look dashing in that uniform you're so cool you're so cool i got to catch a glimpse of sephiroth we need to leave him to the police we'll take your rest up for tomorrow hey good luck out there tomorrow come on that's enough Please, go back to your home. Ah, uh, Zangon. Hmm. Hmm. A soldier. And you are? Richard Zangon. A humble traveler of the world. And teacher of martial arts to the youth. Hmm. I love that they added veins. Like... Mass. You need to bulk up. Who asked you? You could learn a lot from me. Pass. Don't be shy. I have many pupils your age. At last count, one hundred and twenty-eight. In fact, one of them's from this very village. Perhaps you know her. Tifa. Sure. A real talent, that one. This... man. She'll go far. <laughs> yeah, right. They do... Yeah, right. so well. With so many things. I'd be interested it's just... to see how one of Shinra's finest fights. Welcome back. Sephiroth's already gone upstairs. God, they did such a good really job with this segment the time, of the game. But looking back, all the signs were there. From the moment we arrived, Sephiroth just wasn't himself. 
And what you looking at? <laughs> Zangon actually does remind this me of Sean here. Connery a little bit. Huh? I could swear I've seen it before. You okay? Big day tomorrow. We'll be leaving bright and early. You should get some rest. All right. Will do. Night. I oh, so I would do, I do want to say before we get like super far into this. I couldn't get to sleep that night. All right, I'll, I'll wait for the cutscene. Too nervous. Was pretty much the same for me. Okay, actually, hold on. I'm just gonna say it because this cutscene is gonna take a little while. I'm so I'll follow up on your point, Arden. Actually, because uh, that is where I'm kind of going with it. I enjoy the cinematography in this series. Remake did something where um, you see the the clone or the 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 black hooded guy, which I guess you'd just say is a clone. We'll just call him that. Um, there's a segment where uh, Cloud touches the the clone, or the clone the clone reaches out and grabs Cloud during the part where you go and save those kids from the monsters in that kids only area, and he grabs Cloud and he sees Sephiroth. Well, then him and Aerith start talking about Sephiroth, and they're like, he died five years ago or whatever, and sh and she says, hold on, guys. Okay. Yep. That was the, uh, the wife and kid. Um, so anyway, um, there's a part where Aerith, like the camera pans to her mouth and you can tell that what they're trying to convey is that she kind of knows what's going on, but, uh, like they don't want to outright say it. So they do like these camera tricks and stuff. And they do this a lot actually in remake. And from what I can tell of the parts I've played in the game, uh, of Rebirth with the demos and everything, they kind of do the same thing here, and I really like that, and I like that they can show emotion with, like, eye movements and camera positioning and, like, panning of the camera and stuff like that. I think they do a really good job with cinematography, and it's almost like they studied films to figure out how to do the camera work on this. Um, and I I do really enjoy the the segments where they do that because that's storytelling inside of storytelling. And if you watch like any kind of films, like any kind of major directors like Scorsese or anything like that, they use camera tricks like this in their movies to convey emotion or a message that's not outright spoken. And I really, really like that. So things like that where Sephiroth kind of like side eyes cloud and like says night, and you could tell, like, he's troubled by something. I feel like those moments are when remakes, storytelling and world building and character moments are at their absolute best. So, all right, now that I got that out of the way, let's go. Why? <laughs> yeah, I was surprised too. to make her own decisions now. That was years ago, Brian. <laughs> we leave once our guide arrives. Yes, sir. Uh, Brian! Sephiroth, sir, I must insist that I take you up the mountain. My daughter isn't... Dad! Tifa. You and there she is, folks. Out. 
You don't have to do this. I'm going, and that's that. There'll be two soldiers with me. I'll be fine. Pumpkin. Good morning, sir. I'll be your guide for the day. Tifa? You're our guide? I sure am. You can ask anyone around here. I'm the best there is. You could get hurt. Not if you remember to do your job, she won't. Come on. For a posterity, sir? Not today. Can you talk to him? Please, Sephora. It mean a lot to us. It's just one photo. Come on. Where's the harm in that? Yeah, no joke. Say cheese. Sounds like you were having a good time. One more. Yeah, I guess we were Later. for a while. Yeah, I feel like all of the locations just feel alive. It just, it's so great. Halfway up Mount Nebo. I was looking forward to breathing that crisp, clean mountain air again. Sprinting. That. All right. We already know how to do that from the demo. We'll be back, Shinra Manor. I do. I do really like how they did the uh, credits here. Hey, Slayon. You probably already know this. But our reactor's the first of its kind. It really put Mount Nebel on the map. I've seen a few reactors in my time, but none with such a breathtaking view. Who could tire of it? Everyone, eventually. <laughs> I guess that's I I one on way to look at it, like Icarus. <laughs> trips. I think you mean business trips, which are no fun at all. Though you do learn stuff on them. That's so cool. Yeah, that is one thing that bothers me about Shinra Manor is that they put an elevator, and then they're like, oh, well, uh, the villagers wouldn't know about this, even though the elevator is literally right there in the room. Everything okay? Not going too fast for you, am I? Of course not. Yeah, it really has We're come a long way. But I thought you guys were in a hurry. Even so. Also, I I do want to say that I think it's hilarious that they would put an elevator in there anyway, because I just picture, like, okay, Sephiroth is going to go burn the village, right? And he just has to sit there while Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On plays over the elevator as he goes up. Instead of walking up a spiral staircase, he's just going up the elevator. <laughs> Which is the funniest fucking thing I could think of. I also got to say the enemy design in this is really good. What do you think? I think I got this. Then they're all yours. Copy that. Let's finish this. You're done. That was awesome. You think? If this is how it's going to be, there doesn't seem much point in me fighting. I guess not. I really enjoyed my first playthrough of 16. Um, I wish the combat had been a little bit more in-depth. Um, I think it was a game that the combat really only lasted about 20 to 25 hours. 
and for the last 15 or so, it kind of got stale a little bit, because once I found the right combination, it felt like I just, I don't know, it just felt like it, it overstayed its welcome, I guess, and then when I did my platinum run to get the, uh, the hard mode trophy, I was kind of, it, it was kind of a slog. Um, I really liked 16 the first time I played it, but it is definitely, for me, kind of a one-and-done playthrough type game. I just don't think there's enough content in it to justify a full second playthrough. Like, I really wish that 16 had had hard mode unlocked from the beginning. And then it had just been, like, if you finish the game on hard mode, you get a trophy. Instead of making me play through the entire game twice, when I already kind of had an overstayed welcome with the combat in the first playthrough, if that makes sense. The story is phenomenal. I absolutely love the story of 16. It feels more like a Final Fantasy Tactics... Matsuno driven story you can do better than that, can't you? and those are some of my favorites but is by Matsuno he is one of my favorite video game Just writers Yeah, they leaned a little bit too heavily into the... I hate comparing it to Devil May Cry, but I think you almost... You almost can't... Take it away. You almost can't talk about 16 without talking about how it wears its influences on its sleeve. And because of that, Devil May Cry is obviously going to come up because Ryota Suzuki was the guy that did... Uh, Devil May Cry 5, and it's like, as much as I love Devil May Cry 5, I want to play Final Fantasy. So, it's like, it's really hard for me, because it really, I loved it, but I definitely felt it could have been better for a uh, CBU 3 game. I'm not sure, Slayheim. I think they said it was coming, but I don't know if I don't know if they gave a uh, release date. I got the rest. You're done. I'll end it. I blocked that. Okay. Let's finish this. Hey, what's up, dude? Way to go. Shall we pick up the pace? I'm still getting Not used to uh, blocking and stuff, to. and parry okay, timing and stuff like so that. Lucky next time. Then, how about I go on ahead and clear the way for you guys? I'll be careful. <laughs> hey, Cerulean. How you doing? Cool. Good to see you again. See you at the reactor. Okay. Nope, I do not need a materia tutorial. Yep, I already know that. It's about improving materia. Yes, always take every attack full force to the face. That's how a man would do it. <laughs> Try this. 
It's on now. What's the hell? That's that. <clears throat> I definitely dodged that, but okay. <laughs> Alright, Omega, catch you later, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. Alright. Just... I need to heal. I usually have to go with my girl Tifa, so uh, obviously the right answer is um, gonna have to be Red 13, I think. Uh, no, it's probably gonna be Tifa. Wow, it's like you read my mind. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be Barrett actually. We're gonna get the best bromance trophy. Actually, I really hope <clears throat> I didn't get a good look at the trophies, but I would laugh my ass off if they brought back best bromance. In the original game, on, well, not original game, but the original remaster on PS4, they had a trophy called Best Romance, and it's for getting Barrett on the date, which is, like, super hard to do, actually. You have to follow a guide, like, to the, to the letter to do it, because it's so hard to get, because of the, the way the affection system works. Hey, Noctis, good to see you. By the way, uh, congratulations on uh, working towards that. That's good. Glad to see your uh, hard work's paying off. I love boost materia, by the way. What am I doing? Okay, there we go. In fact... I don't know why I did that when I could have just swapped it, but okay. Also... I plan on, like, assessing everything. Yeah, I'm excited to get Alexander, too. Holy shit, when I saw him in the trailer, I was like, YES, I HAVE TO HAVE ALEXANDER! All right, Duke. Catch you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. Also thought this was really cool. Uh, this is another thing they do. Like, when you first walk in this room, you're not really seeing anything. And then all of a sudden you see that shadow. And I love, I love how they did this.
Almost like a horror movie, kind of. What the? Oh, shit. Oh no. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. Got a plug in my controller, it died. Fucking perfect timing, right? Dude, Cypher, you have been around so long. You have seen so many dead controllers. Yes, after after playing Souls games, Final Fantasy games feel like fucking baby mode. Not to say that they're not hard, because when I did the, uh, the demo, the Junon demo, and fought the Terror of the Deep, um... I lost the first time to that fight and then came back and then just beat the shit out of it. Okay, so operator mode. Let's finish this. Brace yourself. Gotcha. I am not. I'm just on normal. Um, I feel like dynamic. Do I don't know, cause I I wonder if dynamic will make the game harder, or if it just drops the difficulty if you're doing poorly. Do you know what I mean? I I don't. I haven't read into it enough to know. If it's like one of those where, um, because I know in, this is going to sound like a really weird comparison, but in the game MLB The Show, if you set it to dynamic difficulty, um, it, uh, thank you. Uh, if you set it to dynamic difficulty, it uh, gets harder or it gets easier. But I didn't know if it got harder in Rebirth. Thank you, Bilbo. Also really feel like this stuff was completely unnecessary. This is one of my least favorite parts of this demo. Or this this part of the game. Actually, I oh no, I can't do it yet. Hold on. When we get to a part where I can get to a menu. Okay. Let's actually see what it says. Enemy difficulty adjusts automatically based on your skill level. Select this if you love the thrill of the fight. That's not really conclusive. It sounds like it might get harder, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it... As long as these games are, it almost feels unnecessary to, to do stuff like that to make it even longer, I guess is what I would say. Um, padding is okay in certain spots. Like, I kind of get it. But this Nibelheim flashback felt kind of really padded out in spots. And I almost wonder if it's the linear parts of the game that suffer from the most padding and not necessarily the open world stuff, because I feel like they put enough stuff in the game for the open world to 
to do and to go and see. So, like, there doesn't need to be padding in those spots, but, like, the linear segments of the game almost seem like, uh... Wait, what? What, Vixen? Just thinking about crossing that thing. Then let me go first. Hey, I'm the guide here. Oh, okay. I got you. Oh, wait, are you guys in a voice call or something? Sephiroth's just like, fuck this, I'm going. Yeah, there's a couple segments of padding in this demo where I'm just like, was it really not? I keep calling it a demo, but I, I mean the actual game. Um, there's a few segments in this in this uh, area. Where I'm like, was that really necessary? Like, okay, the first vacuuming one. Okay, cool, I get that. Then they put another one in it. And then... Uh, you go a little bit farther down, and uh, they put the the valve in the reactor. Then the slow crawl, the uh, the limping segment. Like, there's a lot of stuff in this uh, segment of the game where I was just like, ah, it's a bit of a drag. Yeah. Following the river should get us back to the village. We're not going to the village. Can you get us to the reactor? Sorry, I... I don't think I can. I see. Well, we certainly can't send you back alone. You'll be yeah, safer I'm, with I'm us. Yeah, I'm like, it could have been done more than okay. just one. Like, less than twice. I'll be joining <laughs> just you once. This time what? For your performance review. You kidding me? Good luck. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm glad they still killed a trooper there, too. And I don't know if it's still here. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, oh no, guys. We're at the part that pisses everybody off. We're at the yellow guide markers. Good job, Square Enix. You really failed us. No, it, that is some of the dumbest discourse. Like, I get it if you're trying to do, like, immersion, whatever. But it's not a big deal. Every game under the sun does it. Like, I don't see the issue. Oh, yeah, it's this whole thing. Like, they're like, oh, yeah. Uh, yellow paint ruins the immersion, blah, blah, blah. It's like, shut up. There are so much... What? What am I doing? There are so many other How things to go? bitch about.
Yeah, as much as I like playing a Sephiroth, I think I'm gonna make Cloud the leader. Does he have anything else? Okay, his assess spells. Let's go. Let's go Cura, even though I don't think I'm gonna need it. Okay. At the end of the day, if something is there like that, especially if it's for, like, accessibility, I really don't care. Like, it doesn't bother me. As long as people are able to enjoy the game somehow, like, that's what I think should matter. But... Get him! Show him what we can do. Oh, I forgot about that. Get him! You're done. Damn! Show him what we can do. Batter up. Come on. Charge me. Charge me. Come on, damn it. <laughs> Charge. Stop shooting shit. Charge me. Alright. That. Okay. Yes, Moonlight Greatsword. Okay, nothing up here. Empowerment materia. I'm gonna have to check and really, like, get into the materia system with this because I don't know exactly what uh, bravery and faith do so much. Oh, allows you to use physical and magic. Oh, okay. So it just boosts your attack and your magic attack. Okay, I got it. Let's just all admit that probably the best Moonlight Greatsword is uh, Ludwig's from uh, Bloodborne. Just saying. Dude, the two-in-one materia is dope. I fucking love that shit. Especially since it levels up both spells at the same time. And if you use the um, materia boost, um, or the, the, yeah, the materia booster or whatever, it boosts it up another level, so you don't even have to max yeah, it out to get a Fyraga or Blizzaga wounds, or uh, the other like ones. This will disappear, right? What are you talking about? Who told you that? My dad. And the mayor, if you must know. The mayor. Except the planet's huge. Mako will never run out, right? Naturally formed materia. And look at the size of it. Astounding. For the Mako energy to condense into something like this, it must have taken an eternity. I've always wondered, how does Materia let you cast spells exactly? <laughs> how did you ever get to be a soldier? <laughs> <laughs> to put it simply, the knowledge of the ancients is sealed within each orb. That knowledge not only connects us to I love her, the... it allows us to tap into her power. That's how we can use magic. Or so they say. They're like a chicken ostrich hybrid. Magic sure is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone who'd be livid to hear you call it weird. Or magic for that matter. I can just imagine what he'd say. It's an affront to science. Who? Hojo. Hojo from Research and Development. His predecessor was a great man, but him, he is anything but. I actually really like Sephiroth's voice actor. Tyler Hecklin did a really good job in this game. Well, and I thought he did a good job in Remake, too, even though I saw him every 30 minutes. Yeah. 
Show them what we can do. Oh yeah, I forgot uh, if you uh, if you dodge like charge attacks, it pressures opponents. Like, I think it's only certain ones, um, but uh, the uh, um, there's certain enemies that do charge attacks, and what happens is when you dodge or anything like that. Hey, enough. Keyblade, thank you for that follow. Uh, it actually turns them into like it it causes them to go in that pressure status, so. I really like that they added dodging being actually like semi-effective in inside combat. That was a really good improvement, I think. Cause I did not it might have been in remake, but if it was, I did not I did not notice it. Speaking of being in remake, twin brain. Well, Tifa, I I would know that because I saw the yellow uh, the guides. So uh, thank you, but uh, no thank you. Yeah, I love aerial combat now. I think the reason why I love Final Fantasy VII story so much is that there's not any one villain who is generally, like, to blame for everything. Like, usually there is a villain that you can sit there and be like, okay, yeah, they are the clear-cut villain in this game. But this, this story, or I should say at least the original anyway, because obviously we don't know how this is going to go, but... There's not one true villain. Like, yes, Sephiroth and Jenova are kind of the main antagonists, you'd say. But, like, if you go back, if there's no Jenova, obviously there is no, like, there's no Sephiroth, there's no Angeal and Genesis. But if you go back, like, okay, Jenova kicked it off. But then if... Gast had not started doing experiments with Genova, this would have never happened. And if Hojo hadn't basically taken over hostile, hostile takeover of Gast's science stuff, then Hojo, like, none of it would have happened. So Hojo's a villain. Then you have Shinra, who funded all of it. And it's like, okay, Shinra's a villain. But then you have, okay, you create these soldier programs, and now you have Sephiroth as a villain. And even even Shinra turns guys that were good guys into villains. So it's like there's no like clear-cut villain that you can point to and be like, okay, yeah, they are whatever, because it's like you could trace back all of these problems to Hojo with the funding of Shinra. So it's like, okay. It's just interesting that there's all these different players involved with how this story goes, and I really like that. It's all you. Stand back. Exactly, yeah, Jay. Like, exactly. Let's get this over with. Took you long enough. Hey, Reaper, thank you for that follow. Like, there's a lot of layers to the story. So it's like... It's not just a cut and dry, this guy's a bad guy, this guy's a good guy. It's not your typical, like, Final Fantasy... 
hero versus villain story. It's like it's complex. Get him. Brace yourself. Say, that one felt pretty good. Yeah, 14 does a really good job of that too. But we all know that the true villain of 14 is the Lala Fell, so, uh. Case closed. So, fun fact, Emmett is such a good villain and my favorite 14 character that I named my son after him. And yes, just so we're all clear, my wife knows that and knows that that's why I wanted to name him Emmett. I did hear that uh, Magnify Materia um, is later in the game than you might expect. I have I don't really know where it comes in. Fourteen is so great. Hey, Michael, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I tend to like, I, I call them morally gray villains because sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, this guy is clearly a villain, but I get it, you know? Like, okay, M itself, like, I get why M itself is the way he is. He's definitely still, like, technically a villain, but I get it. Sephiroth, I kind of get it, like... I'm not saying that he's morally gray, but I think he's more of a... I would say he's more of a tragic villain than a morally gray villain, because obviously, like, when he goes off the deep end, the guy has no morals, but... Um, I do tend to like the morally gray... part of, of villains. Um, Persona 5 Royal had that, and I really enjoyed the way Persona 5 Royal made me think about what the villain meant and what he was trying to convey in the story. Like, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh, I'm playing on performance. Um, once you get used to 60 FPS, it is very hard to go back. So, I'm playing on performance mode. I know that it is a little bit sketchy at times. But, uh... Right, and I'm not a big fan of 13, and that's pretty well documented, but I appreciate what Caius brought to Final Fantasy. Um, and I think he's a villain that you can definitely sympathize with, especially giving, given the idea of what actually happens with him. So this is what ruins 13 for me, besides, like, just the extreme linearity of it. Maybe try to up for 
And I know it sounds weird because I'm a huge Final Fantasy X fan, but the linearity was handled differently in that. Oh, shit. So, what bothers me about 13 is the, uh, um, how do I put this? So, when you tell a story, and your thing in that story is that you are given a task that you have no idea what it actually is, and then, like, the game is like, oh, uh, yeah, so your your job is to do this, but you don't know what your job is. It's just kind of there. And then you find out later that you could have just been told from the beginning because the gods can talk and tell you exactly what they want you to do, but instead they were just giant dicks and were like, oh, no, we, we're not going to tell you what you need to do even though we definitely need you to do it. That's where 13 fell apart for me. That and I did not like the difficulty spikes at all. <laughs> it was like you would go from like kicking things asses to like all of a sudden you could barely win a fight. Pretty mobile. Till we knock it down. Good thing I don't just fight with a sword. Oh. Go for the legs. Yeah, I know that cloud, thank you. Okay. Yeah, Gambit system. I actually still, to this day, think that a Gambit system would have been friggin' perfect for this. But there are materia that kind of simulate... Kind of simulate a... Kind of a Gambit system. Like, there's auto-cast, there's, I think, auto-cure. There's, there's auto-materia that you can get. Stay alert. By the way, I would just like to point out that uh, at one time I said that uh, it would be great to have team attacks in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and everybody was like, no, there's no way they could do it, there's too much to handle, there's too much to, uh, like, it's just, it wouldn't work, and blah blah blah, and I'm like, ah, I think it could. And then what do they do? They put in combo attacks. And yes, I know I'm being petty, but I don't care. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's not good. Actually, made so it's funny that you say it's funny that you say that. Not that I really believe that they should, but uh, 
I made a video a long time ago, and it was about there was a um, there's a scene in the trailer for um, remake, and it was where they were showing the fight with Abzu, and I legit was like, they could do team attacks because when I saw. Um, there was a moment where I saw, like, Tifa, Here goes. she bounced up, and then she launched herself at the enemy, and at the time, it looked like she flew, the way the combat was going, it looked like she flew off a cloud sword as he was swinging, because for some reason, the attack that was going on from cloud just happened to be at the right perfect angle. And I made an entire video about how awesome it would be if Remake had, uh, like, team attacks. And at the time when I said that, everybody was like, no, it just wouldn't work, because how would they combine, like, Tifa and Kate Seath? Well, it was in the trailer for Rebirth. Um, how would they combine, like, there'd be so many characters that they would have to make attacks for. And I'm like, it could work. I mean, they did it in Chrono Trigger. I realize that's a much... And less extensive game, evil, but still. Trying to kill everyone on the planet. Like, help me to understand this shit. Tell me something that'll really make my blood boil. Like, I feel like. Oh, I will. I will. It is hard to doubt that they can do something in a video game anymore, just because of what we have seen in our lifetimes when it comes to the improvement of video games. Do you think that Chrono Trigger would have been possible? In 1986, when they made Final Fantasy, you like, here, Tifa. no, like no the improvements way. had to come. I want to go too, please. Sorry, no civilians, even if we weren't on a mission. Come on. Keep the young lady safe. Carry on. I abuse the shortcuts, oh. like a motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also interested to see that Reaper. You better keep me safe. I really wanted to see the reactor. <sighs> Would it kill this guy to say something? Don't worry, Tifa. You will see the reactor. Didn't expect it to be all systems go. You'd think it'd be running at reduced output. Like most last running models. And let me guess. Pillagers don't have a clue about this. Knowing Shinra? Of course not. The company really needs to be more transparent. Tell that to the person. Hey, what's up, Dr. Strife? What exactly is the problem with this place? The people in charge. While most reactors are under the jurisdiction of urban planning, this one is overseen by R and D. Huh. Why do I suddenly have a bad feeling about this? Whatever you see here, you are not to speak of it. Oh, I won't. I love, by the way, how Remake and Rebirth have deepened our understanding of Shinra, how they operate as a company, and not just what little bit we got in the original game. Because I feel like the original game really didn't explore exactly how Shinra works. And now we have it to where, like, we actually see the inner workings of Shinra. Like, Sephiroth explaining there exactly what, you know, the R&D department, and then the science department, and then, like, all the other departments that we really didn't get a lot of information on. Remake and Rebirth have been... Perhaps um, you'd like to say a few words to your sword first? Have done... I love... I love that foreshadowing, actually. Like, when Cloud was walking through the Sector 5 reactor in Remake, and he was talking about how the Airbuster, like, was used for large... monsters... I love stuff like that, because that's like a world tell... That's like a world-building detail that you really didn't get in the original. Like, it was... It ju it's just a cool little aspect of these games that I really oh, enjoy their You're attention really to detail something. on. What are those things?
Genova? Wasn't that... They did this part really well. <clears throat> like, really well. The valve function must be forcing the pods to depressurize. Cloud, go out and shut off the valve. Copy. Yeah, no doubt, or no doubt. This, I, oh fuck, I hate this. This is where I'm just like, why? You know? Not only do they want you to do this multiple times, they also want you to hold down the button. And this is the stuff that I don't like that they do. This is completely unnecessary. Yeah, we had to get the haptic feedback in there somewhere, so let's, uh... What are you doing? These pods were built for the production of artificial materia. But Hojo repurposed them as incubators. Cages for animals. Infused with Mako. All to birth a new breed of monster. Thanks, Sephiroth. Now I'm gonna have to bring that fucking vacuum in here. But he didn't stop at animals. Oh no. There were other subjects. Look. They did this part justice too. Holy shit. My mother's name was Genova. Could it be that I was created the same way? I love the detail in his eyes. Ever since I was a child, I knew, I knew that I was different, that I was special, but not like this, not like this. Eventually, we went back to the inn. But when we got there, Sephiroth locked himself in his room. The mayor had been looking forward to having dinner with bona fide soldiers, so he didn't take the news too well. Dad had to put up with his belly aching for hours afterward. Huh? Must have sucked. But what about Sephiroth? What happened to him? I love Barrett. He left. Didn't tell a soul where he was going. I'll say this. I might have my res reservations about the storytelling as, as a whole. More so just the ending and the convoluted segments of it. But they nail the characters so well in this game. Like, it's moments like this where things are faithful but expanded upon that I think are just absolutely, I'm not going to say perfect, but they're as close to what I envisioned when I played this game when I was younger. Um, that 
I, I'm glad that they went that direction. But obviously, that comes with the caveat that I didn't really care for the extra convoluted bits. I met Sephiroth as he was heading for Shinra Manor, and he acted like I wasn't even there. Busy, I suppose. Hmm? Sephiroth? Ah, I did see him leave a little while ago. He, the Zangon almost sounds like the bartender from uh, Catherine, who is also. Uh, oh, god damn it. What is his name in Persona 5? The coffee shop owner. The one that you stay with. Sojiro, yes, thank you. building in town and older than the reactor the company used to conduct research there back when they were still a small manufacturer even so the rent on that plot was basically what kept the village of foam well here we are what now i mean the whole place is pitch black you know i will say this or something? What if he's sick? and i i know hey, right now i can say it because obviously we haven't gotten there yet but uh I'm thinking maybe getting to the end of this with you guys will be a little bit better than how I had to do it with Remake. Because I'll be honest, the way I had to do it with Remake was I had to sit on it for quite a, a little bit uh, before I could talk about the ending, because I was contractually obligated to not talk about the ending. And, uh... So... I think being able to play through this and deal with the ending in real time as opposed to having to sit and wait for all of you guys to see it is going to allow me to... You're going to be able to see my feelings in real time as opposed to me stewing on it. And I think that's going to help me personally. Um... If there's anything towards the end that I'm going to have to deal with from a from a fan perspective, I guess, is what I'll say. I you know, and the thing is I love the early copy system because I obviously was able to take advantage of it and you know, I got to work with Square Enix, which is something that it, it's a dream come true, right? Like that's something that people want to do is work with Square Enix. And Things like that helps me get interviews with Hironobu Sakaguchi. Like, I'm not ever going to say that I regret anything from a content creation standpoint other than maybe... Well, nah, I just won't... I don't think I'll comment on that. But I think... I regret how everything went down. Excavated from a two thousand year old. But I don't record. change how I feel about Professor the situation, I guess is what I would say. Genova. M E G L seven seven nineteen seventy seven. Genova. Verified as an ancient. Uh M E G L nine thirteen nineteen seventy seven. Genova project approved. So, they named the life form Genova. And once they understood what she was. The cinematography in this is so good. They grew ambitious. Hey, Sephiroth. What you got there? Leave me be. Awesome, Bilbo. Glad to hear that. And that was it. God, this is so well done. Reading, reading, like a man possessed. Hey, what's up, Bat? Welcome back. 
I also love that instead of a phasing through the books, they actually made the camera like go up and over the books too. We got you, Nova. A locked reactor door. The name of Sephiroth's mother. And an ancient. Ah, screw it. Racking my brain's not gonna get me anywhere. May as well just ask the guy. Also, a minor detail that people probably don't care about, but I do. Because I feel like it helps with continuity. <laughs> God, I love his laugh. Ah, Cloud. I've come across the most fascinating passage. They made the magnet on his back that holds this the buster sword. found in strata dating back 2,000 years. Smile. With what could only be described as ethereal grace. Though the truth eluded me at first, I later determined that she was an ancient or a steward of the planet, as they are referred to in legend. She needed a name, and so I dubbed her Genova. The Genova project was approved soon after. A bold initiative to resurrect the long dead ancients. An initiative that resulted in my conception. In more ways than one, Slayheim. creation. The crowning glory of Professor Gath's wondrous experiment. He created you? Holy shit. They did such a good job with this. asking myself why couldn't I have come too sooner if I had maybe I could have saved the village or tried at least mommy issues the video game <sighs> eh I'm kind of indifferent what? about the um, about the change. Like, it, there are some changes where I'm like, okay, that's cool, or, you know, whatever, or stuff like that. I don't know. There's just some where I'm just like, okay. Get in there. The villagers need your help. And my least favorite part of the demo is right here. I'm surprised, too, about the Yuffie thing, because Yuffie has been pretty popular since intermission. Let me throw my son to him there! I'm sorry, he's gone! <laughs> Some of the character movements in this part are really awkward, and that's why the... Um, Uh, Get your head straight. I need you to secure the way out now. Yes, like, 
I'll show you here in a second, but. Yeah, the D yeah, intergrade, but the DLC is called intermission. I actually really liked the Yuffie DLC. Hold on, I'm, I'm coming. Yeah, there are things that like if you think about it too hard are definitely not going to uh Like, okay. He just walked out all nonchalant and then just kind of hunched over right next to a burning log. Like, that's so awkward. Oh, uh, Nero? It usually only takes me about two times to beat Nero. Unless you're talking about uh, Weiss. When I say, uh, unnecessary padding, this is exactly what I mean, by the way. Just, he can run and jump out of the way there, and then give it just a second. And now he's going a normal rate of speed almost. Yes, I agree with that too, AJ. I agree with that too. I love this part. Also, I just want to point out. Uh, I love I love this part too. I do love this part. Don't worry, I got you. Come on, let's get you up. Yeah, see that was badass. So Cloud's mother's last words were actually spoken in Remake by Sephiroth. And I pointed that out in a video. And there were so many people that told me I was wrong. I mean, so many people that told me I was wrong. And boom. Cloud's mother's last words were the exact words that Sephiroth used in Remake to, to, to basically screw with his mind. Okay, perfect example. If I don't touch the controller... Oh! Maybe they changed that. Yeah, this is This is what bothers me about this part is that they just stand there. And even Sephiroth just stands there. God, I love that.
That could have either been a cutscene or just me holding the left stick up. No, they pretty much just told me that, like, I was coming up with BuzzFeed-style videos where I was just uh, clickbaiting or I was whatever. They never really gave me a reason why I was wrong about it being uh, his mom's final words. There was also a lot of people that were like, no, it's, it's Zach's final words. And it's like, okay, but... You could semi make that argument. The thing is, I followed Sephiroth all the way back to the reality. Cloud doesn't know who Zack is at this point, and to use his last words wouldn't really do anything to him. You know, I, so uh, I really didn't feel like it was Zack's, but then I was like. It's obviously his mom, and everybody's like, "No, it's Zach," or "No, it, it's Dad. it's just Sephiroth being a dick." Like, I'm like, "Come on." It was Sephiroth, wasn't it? He did this, didn't he? Did Sephiroth do this? Sephiroth, soldiers, Mako, Shinra. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of all of this. Yeah, the hat floating thing is great. I agree. And now the part that was not in the demo. I think it's funny, that it's kind of funny that you mentioned that, because I feel like my theories have always been rooted in realism and come for you. Um, more like yeah. centrally lore-based instead of just coming up with random shit and inferring stuff. I've always felt like my theories tend to be a little bit more realistic. Yeah, I agree, Kill Switch. I kind of do too. That's another cinematic moment that's great. Like, I just cannot get. I cannot stress enough just how good the cinematography in this game is. This game I know exactly how we can do that. This game should definitely win some plan. kind of award for sound design. Sephiroth! And not just music. <laughs> but like actual sound design. Mother, they have come again. The ones who robbed you of the planet. Your planet. A 
There's no need to be sad, Mother. Because I'm here for you. Now and forever. I love the calm demeanor that is clearly covering this demented soul that we're witnessing here. You killed my mom. You killed Tifa. My village. My home. <laughs> they were mine by right. This planet too. For I have been chosen. I believed in you. Just delusional as fuck, and I love it. Not you! Whoever the hell you are! God, this was done so well. God, they did that so well. Holy shit. And that's the last thing I remember. The rest is a blank. The hell it is? What happened? It was all over the news. I remember watching it with my mom. They said he went missing during a training exercise. But then, the story changed. A couple days later, they started reporting that he was killed in action. Yeah, that was it. The news outlets are nothing but Shinra mouthpieces spewing propaganda. Only dumbasses believe that shit. Question. Does that make me a dumbass? <laughs> uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> what I meant was, screw Shinra for manipulating <laughs> honest folks. It doesn't matter what they said back then. Sephiroth was in Midgar. We fought him. Whatever happened, he's alive. Don't know about alive so much as around. But why come back now? After five years, doing who knows what. Because that's interesting. He wants to finish what he started. He wants to reclaim his birthright and rule over the planet with Jenova at his side. After five years? Not to sound like a broken record, but it's really bothering me. Well, what's bothering me is all this Jenova stuff. Heard that. Excuse me. Guess the travel or something really did a number on my back. Feels as stiff as a board. Let me take a look. Ah! Wow. <laughs> you weren't kidding, were you? Let's get you back to the room. Yeah. Let's just call it a night. No amount of guesswork will get us any closer to the truth. So how about we give our heads a rest? God, Max Middleman does such a good job as Red. Uh, oh, no, you don't. That bad. <laughs> also, John Eric Bentley does great as Barrett. I think the whole voice cast is great, honestly. Does anybody remember that Operation Reunion bullshit where everybody was like, Bring back the original voice actors. It's like, come on. Hey, Eric. These guys are doing a awake? great job. Barely. Why? Was wondering, what's Cloud been doing these past five years? Where's he been? And you're asking me this? Just had a feeling you'd know. Probably did at one point. 
All that stuff was taken from me, though. Or maybe erased? Oh, God. By whispers? Yeah. Maybe that's why. Why what? This is gonna sound crazy, but as far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. Hey guys, if you made it to the end of this Let's Play episode, big, big, big thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in this video in the next episode, but I just wanted to say again, thank you to Square Enix for the uh, review copy. It really means a lot to work with them again, and I appreciate every, op every opportunity they've given me so far. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed this series, and uh, that's it. See you in the next mission, guys. Later.